Uh, question 11. Yeah, question, 11 I have a question about it too. So. Yeah. Yeah. What I'll do is like today's the re today is the review, not the review. We're going to go over every problem in exam one. Okay. Nice. And uh, as I start to grade, this also gives it since it's an assignment with unlimited uploads. Um, one of the things that you guys can do before like today and then tomorrow is to help me with partial credit you can upload like commentary on your own work so today we'll learn out what was right and wrong and so it's like hey so you know through your work if you did it right you got 10 points unless i you know if there's something really weird uh, and if it's wrong you can actually tell me how like what mistake you did you can upload like hey i was wrong on this problem this is why and to try and explain like that will help me like like I had no idea what I was doing all right <laughs> that'll help me with partial credit <laughs> or if you can say oh man I made an arithmetic on this arithmetic mistake on this line at this point mm -hmm. so it'll make it easier for it'll make partial credit work more along the lines of what it should be but today we're going to just simply go over the entire exam and give you guys some ideas on like like how I make problems or what I expect to have happen and you know like so it's not like these things don't come out of like crazy world no it is kind of crazy I'm not exactly normal will notes be given and on our test or just a grade uh, you'll get a grade but that's what today is going to be about um, is to go through every single problem and you'll see the solutions and when we're done obviously this will be posted for everybody to look at and then like i said you can use today and tomorrow to go back to what you uploaded upload like another file you know look at your work and essentially grade your own work i mean i'm going to be giving you a grade to say for yourself oh i did that right i did this wrong and when you did something wrong find out where it was and then you can give me some commentary to kind of help me understand like find your mistake because that's so hard on linear algebra is finding uh, a mistake <laughs> it's like especially when you do something on linear algebra and we're uh Syrian, we're talking about uh the exam and what we're okay. And the hard part about grading linear algebra is always like with so many numbers on a big giant block and I look at it, if it's right, usually it meets a pattern. When it's wrong, um, uh, you would actually have to, you know, have to find out where. And it might be something as simple as you had two times negative three and subtract four and you wrote one. And it's like, just, you know, just a mistake. Um, no, you don't have to re-upload the exam. Uh, you have the ability to uh, upload other things besides exams and, and stuff like that. So I can look at that uh, as well as make commentary. Like one of the things you can do is like type in your own comics in a written area. Oh, like each question you can write comments on each question, right? No, I mean, like you would say on problem one, this is where I was wrong. Okay. And this Wait. is what I did wrong. And if you wanted to, if it was easier for you to like sit there and take all of your work and then just like grab a different color ink and say, <laughs> this was wrong and this is where I made my mistake and then just scan the entire thing and re-upload the other. If that was easier for you, that would be fine too. So, all right, let's, I'll, let's hmm? Was question 11 uh, extra credit, right? Well, it's not extra credit. It's worth as much as all the others. It's just hard, right? Yeah. It's not really hard. Even it's like, there's like understanding how things flow together. Um, it's not like crazy hard. It's more along the lines of like do? understanding the meaning. And we'll do that. We'll talk about that when we get to it. So, so what do we have to do now after the exam thingy? Do we just sit back and wait? You don't have to do anything if you don't want, all right? What I'm going to do okay. is this. So here's the exam, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna talk about the work I did. I mean, oh, like really? why this happened, you're gonna have every single solution. Okay. Now, if you choose to, I'm making, this is an option that a lot of times I would like to know is when you did it wrong, I have to find where. 
So what I'm doing is, since this is the way I'm doing it, I'm gonna, in terms of uploading, you have a couple of options, right? What you can do is you can go back to the assignment and do one of two things. I'm gonna grade what you submitted. But you have the option, if you want to, to essentially grade your own work in the following way. If you were doing this problem and as you were working it out and you noticed that, um, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to red pen, like red, like you're doing your work. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, look, I added this and this. And then, okay, oh, I have, you know, 2x1, 3x1, that's 5x1, x2 minus x2 is 0, 4 and 1, and you wrote 3, right? And it was supposed to be 4 plus 1 is 5. You would simply say, well, you know, that's supposed to be 5, and you would say, you know, I made an arithmetic mistake. And then if you had now comes the hard part for like me, and you can look at your own work, is do you continue to make mistakes? In other words, as you then solve for x1 and x2 and then x4, as you start to do an x3 and you start to do all this work, is if the answer was three and you got a fraction of three fifths and you did the rest of it, it's like, oh, I did no other mistakes. The only mistake I made was this arithmetic mistake. Okay, that, you know, writing that out for me helps me with partial credit. Because if I look at your answer and I see oddball answers, I have to go back here and ask, what in the world did you do? And I got to dig through it. But it's your choice to say, hey, look, I did one arithmetic mistake. Every other work, except if this would have been right, it actually would have been x1 was 3 fifths, and all the other work from that point on is correct, given that I had 3 fifths instead of 1. And then I would look at that and I'd say, oh, minus 1. You get 9 out of 10. And so that's up to you. If you don't, I'm just going to dig through it and try to figure things like that out on partial credit. Um, Are you going to leave it to you to figure out? Oh, I'm still going to. I'm going to have to if you don't. This yeah. just helps me. That's okay. all it is. It also helps you because one of the important parts is given every one of these problems, any class you take, right? Mm -hmm. If I would mark it and I say, okay, you have a minus three, so you have a seven out of ten on this problem right? Yeah, that's your grade. You would never accept that in terms of knowledge. You would yeah. never accept that I can't do this problem. You need to go back to your problem on your own and be able to do all of these at 100%. You should know where you went wrong, how to do it right, and that should be done honestly by Wednesday, you know, like within two days of ever getting back an exam on your own, no matter what your class is, once you know what you did wrong, you should be able to do it correctly, know where you went wrong, why it was wrong, why you should have done it this way, and why this way is correct. If you can do that within two days, then final exam, comprehensive finals are easy because you're ready. You know how to do everything correctly. You're 100% in your mind. Do we have a comprehensive great. final in this class? We can, normally we would, but not in the summer. Okay. Because we have no finals week. Yeah. Right? So, and I, I haven't even fully decided what I'm going to do in fall. Because in fall, nobody can come back, right? Yeah. You leave for Thanksgiving, you're not coming back. I mean, essentially, oh, okay. being on campus ends the week of Thanksgiving. Which means what our comprehensive final all of a sudden becomes online. I was just wondering, like, if you didn't do very well on this exam, I guess what would happen? Because if it's like, come back aboard. <laughs> come back. <laughs> like I said, all right, what, what did I mention about the lowest exam? Uh, that's average with your other. Right. Average. So yeah. like, let's say you get a 50 and then you get a 70 and then you get a 75 and then you get an 83. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> then you get an 83 you average all those yeah and then i for me i average them and then i throw away that and put the average in that spot so it's you know it's it's a form of comp you know comprehensive it allows me to know it's not truly comprehensive but it allows me to say that you've learned more than this one test so anyways so Let's talk about this exam. 
So exam one, uh, things that not everybody did, and here's, here's an, a very, very, very important thing. Read, <laughs> right? Every problem has words, read it, right? And as I go through here and I'm like, time you started the exam. And then, you know, I would like to know that. Write your MyWSU, sign your name, that you're going to abide by the rules of academic honesty, right? That was part of the, the header on this. I'd sent the email about it, things of that nature. In other words, I'd like you to, one of the things I'm catching is the fact that I can, there, I turn on view for the assignment. I can see when you first looked at it to download, I see when you upload. And that's just a real easy way for me to check on honesty. It's like, this is when I started it and this is when I ended it. Well, I have timestamps and I can sit there and see things like, you know, that is what it is. Are you being honest? Uh, the signing your name is, I want you in your mind to commit yourself to honesty. Uh, it's interesting what speaking or signing or saying something does. Uh, in your head, um, I've I mean, I, I've done this before, like on, you know, friends that are, you know, they're not married, but they're like in a serious relationship and things like that. Right. And I'll usually talk to the guy. It's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're committed and, and everything else. And then I'll, I'll make, you know, the comment. It's like, well, why aren't you married? Well, in my head, I'm married. And it's like, well, there's a big difference between just like saying you are and getting up in front of a bunch of people and saying, please hold me accountable in my relationship. I mean, when you say it, it takes on a much deeper meaning. And we all might be, I'm committed to honesty. Well, I want you to tell me that you are. I want you to write your name, right? And sign it and say, I'm committed to honesty. And I told you as my teacher that I am. There's something that does, you know, to yourself when you actually do that. You know, you feel like, oh, I'm okay with that because I'm committed to it. Anyways, so please, like on these, these will be here, right? When I, when I say, when I ask, please do that. And it's, a, and it's a good check on that. All right, for the mathematics. Uh, again, the way this works is, you know, I don't, where the solutions come from is I pick, you know, what I want the system of equations to be. And then I know what my answers are. I already knew that the answers are going to be one, two, one, two, or two, one, negative one, one. I tend to pick answers that are nice and clean. And if I pick those answers, if there are different timestamps for opening assignments and opening the PDF, I open the link, but didn't until I got settled a while later. Mm -hmm. um, so you downloaded it, but you didn't, but you didn't download. Well, I'll have to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, Drew, on that one. Because for all Blackboard does is like you've, you've committed to starting. And, like, and so the moment you click on it and you can download it, the idea is to assume download. So I'll have to look. On, yep. Um, so that's how those problems are made. I already know. I create a system of equations that you know, doesn't have like horrific, you know, integer solutions. And I already picked the integer solutions and then I add it. In particular, I picked zero for the first because the, what that did is it made the first equation, x4 minus x2 equaling zero, very easy, right? So if x4 minus x2 is zero, so for one group of students, you had zero, four, four, one. Another group of students had zero, five, five, five. Either way, you both, when you look at a problem, don't try to jump straight into um, any particular technique. You pause and ask what would make my life easiest. And when you look through all of these, x4 minus x2 being zero just simply says x2 is x4. And the moment you have x2 is x4, the rest of the equations become three equations, three unknowns. So you pause, you always look at it whenever you're problem solving and you're not using, you know, linear algebra is a nice algorithmic system. But when you're truly problem solving, it's one of the reasons why I want this is that you stop and you look back at the entire thing and say, what will make my life easier? And it's always important to have that skill set to be able to say, what's easiest, what's going to make my work as easy as possible. But the moment you do that, then 
this if x2 is x4 I just well I'm not gonna worry about the x4 because x2 is x4 x2 x2 that's actually two x2s and then 2x2 minus x4 is just an x2 right and there are no x there is no x other other x2s and so that's just 3x1 minus x2 on that so I have I've shifted my problem, whether it was one group of students who were having 0, 4, 4, 1, this is where I have a split. I'm doing both problems at the same time. Half of you will have seen this. The other half of you will see this. And then when you look at this, I have x1, x2, x3, I have x1, x2, I have x1, x2. Again, there should be a flag looking at this and saying, oh, wait a second. That has a positive x2, that has a negative x2. Very naturally, just add it. If I just add it, the x2s go away. I have 5x1 equals 5. And now look at this. If I add them, I get 5x1 on the other hand equals 10. So one group of students will get x11, one group of students will get x12. In other words, depending on who you are, you're either working the left or the right. And from this point on, it's just, you could do the scratch work. Uh, most of the time for me, I just do it in my head. Um, X1's one, if X1's one, then you would pick either one of those. That's three times one minus X2 equals one. So that's three, and then bring the one across, bring the X2 across, X2 is two. But since X2 and X4 are the same, I've gotten both answers at the same time. Similarly, you could do this one, and you get X2 is one, but that means X4 is one. And then you go all the way back since one, two, and four are solved, one, two, and four are solved. Just go ahead and use this equation, which is the same for both of them, to solve for x3. And plug the numbers in, you get one, you get negative one. Now, uh, whenever you're submitting solutions for people to grade, don't do this, right? Just don't stop. And then I have to dig through because usually when you do your work, students will like write it over here and write it, write it left, write it right, you know, all over the place. I can't find your answer. If you get an answer, clean it up and write your answer so that I can look at it. And one of the things that happens is if I look at it and say, okay, that's a correct answer. It allows me to look back at your work and start looking to make sure you did correct work and you weren't just trying to write a correct answer that you found in a different way. In other words, I want to match your work to your answer. If it's incorrect, that actually lets me know a couple of things. One, you obviously didn't cheat because unless you cheated from somebody who got it wrong, but it lets me know there's something wrong. And I can go back and try to find what's wrong so I can do partial credit. So that's you know how grading actually works. And so those would be your two answers. How'd you guys feel on this first problem? I kind of used a different approach. I just kind of took the equation and then I subtracted it with another equation. Mm -hmm. But then I still got the same answer. Yeah, you did, did it a long way. If you do correct logic, I mean, if you do all correct algebra, you're going to get the same answer, yeah. right? But yeah. one of the reasons why I do this sort of problem and now that I presented it like this is I want people to, at times in, in real life problems is back off and sometimes say, Yes, I know there's an algorithmic approach, but if I slow down and look at it differently, is there something that can help me solve it faster or solve it differently that may or may not help me? That always happens on techniques of substitution and elimination. There's usually versions that are like, oh, if I do this, this problem's a little bit easier. Definitely tell me exactly what you were discussing. And yeah, <laughs> and that's the other thing is like, yeah, it's like, that's always tough. It's like, we feel so far removed from algebra, but algebra is just the idea of solving for the unknown. And we do those sorts of things all the time. I mean, like, like I said, I was laying down vinyl tile this weekend. It is, every, every piece of tile is seven and one eighth inches wide. I have, I have a room that's about 14 feet long. I mean, wide, what do I need to do? Where should I start? How do I snap a chalk line? How many tiles are going to occur so that I want to end, you know, at a place that allows me to actually solve it, right? In other words, do the problem, right? I want to lay this down right without making it look stupid. How do I do that? A lot of it's algebra, 
right? Solving like how many, where do I put, where should I snap a chalk line so I have a straight line? So all of those sorts of problems, whoops, too far down. Um, do, 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 do. There we go, oh, too far, what in the world? All right, for this in terms of your notes, um, I also post this when we're done. I'll be posting it to my personal homepage. I think I mentioned last review where that's at. Just if you search for Mark Ayers methods, chaos math, which I use, because I'm chaos. So, I mean, doing algebra in your head is important. All right, how do we do it in the linear algebra way? If we do it in the linear algebra way, one of the things that I do a lot of times are I do a row swap like immediately. Uh, here's a little hint, right? Augmented matrices, right? have the left-hand side of the equation equals. Now, one of the things that you can do, <clears throat> if you're equal to one vector, which would be like 0, 4, 4, 1, and another vector, which is 0, 5, 5, 5, which is for A, B, C, D. If you want, you could do both at the same time by creating one augmented matrix. And so what I did is I did a row swap immediately. I took row one and row two, and the reason why is I know what I need. I need Gaussian elimination. I need a one in the upper left-hand side. Well, there's a one right there. So I'll just do it now. I will make him row one, 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 negative one, one. Some students, will have, one of, some of you will have four, some of you have five. Well, I'll just put it together and I'll do both problems at the same time. Just so you know, <laughs> for half of you, you would have had this. For the other half of you, you wouldn't see that, you would see this. But I'll do both students at, in, at once by just augmenting it because I'm not gonna do a column op, I'm just doing row, so we'll get to the same solution. Anyways, that's what I did. You, it doesn't matter what order you put it in, that's just a row swap. So I just did a row swap immediately, and I have that. I changed the order, why? I tempted you to do it wrong purposefully, right? I put an X4, then an X2. Because why? Because this is X1, this is X2, this is X3, this is X4. I'm checking, if you know how to do an augmented matrix. So I will tempt you to do it wrong because what I'm really doing is that you don't know how to do an augmented matrix. You've pattern recognized. You don't know what you're, we don't know what an augmented matrix really is. You're just doing it by pattern. You've seen it and you're just, now I'm not thinking about it. I want you to pause and understand what an augmented matrix is. So if that was your first mistake, then that'd be like, hey, let me know that. That's, you can go back and check your own work. Right. All right. So right, once you write an augmented matrix correctly, what's the purpose? Well, you have your lead and you're going to make everybody below it a zero. So I would take and if you don't write it down, it makes it hard to check your work for me. You know, OK, I took I took row three and I added a negative two row one to make a new row three. I took row four and I took a negative three row one to make a new row four, and that created those two rows. And you need it, it's okay, it's like two minus two, zero, two minus two, zero. Zero minus a negative two, it's two, so that's two. Negative one minus two is negative three, and I have four minus two fours is minus one four, I have five minus two fives, so I have a minus five, and then just do the entire work and half of the class would be seeing this, half of the class would be seeing this. This isn't like the answer that you're gonna do. I didn't expect you to solve both problems. I expect you to solve one of them, All right? And then what you have is you have your next lead. And now that I have this lead, which is your first non-zero, I don't care about row one and column one. I wanna make everybody below it a zero. Well, the only thing to get rid of is the negative three. And so I would take negative three row twos, I would take, okay, I'm gonna take, sorry, row four, add a negative three row two to get a new row four, and there that makes that a zero, I get the rest of the problem. And then now I have a lead, and I wanna make everybody below it a zero, and I took negative three row twos and two row threes to make a new row three, and we get this thing finally in Gaussian elimination. Right, I wanna make it triangular that I can now back solve. Um, this obviously is not the only way to do it, 
right? Any row op is allowed. You could do as many row swaps, you could insert fractions. You try to stay away from fractions as long as possible because mentally it's easier to keep track of integers than it is to do fractions. And so do it as long as you can. It doesn't matter though. As long as you do it correct, you're fine. Uh, the moment you make a mistake, and then you start to get to this problem like, okay, negative five, negative 10, negative five, I divide by negative five, I get one, two, one. So for one group of solutions, right, the answer is two. And now we start back solving. Now that I have two, it would have gone there, it would go there, it would go there, and then you would move it to the other side. And so that would be, that's a negative six, but I move it to this side, it's a positive six. Positive six minus four is two, you divide by two. Oh look, one. But now that I have this as a one, a one goes into those positions and you just keep on going back until you solve, you solve it by back solve and you get the exact same answer. Any questions on that? How do you feel about it in terms of uh, like the mistakes that you did make. How, wh what do you feel like was the most common mistake that, like, if you had to guess, what do you think the most common mistake is that, some, that happens on a problem like this? Algebraic mistakes. The back solve, like here, I didn't even write the, I just did it. <laughs> you know, I do it in my head, right? Go here, move across, right? You're constantly doing that. And that's huge. You know, the other is just arithmetic, right? You're taking, you know, this idea of taking minus three of one and adding it to this one, right? Taking a negative three times that row and adding it to that row. A lot of times what happens is a missed distribution, right? You'll do things like, okay, minus three times minus one is three. Three minus a three is a zero. And then you forget. <laughs> you forget. You forget to do it to the rest. It's just like... You just go through, it's like, oh, I, I got what I wanted, I have my zero. And then it's like, okay, but what about the rest? Oh man, you know, I forgot that. That happens as well. And other ones are just simply, what's negative six plus five? And you write one, because they're one apart. And it's like, no, they're, that's minus one. So those are another common mistakes. And you have to kind of catch that. The hard part again on partial credit is, do you just not know what you're doing like at all? Like the entire problem. <laughs> it's just like, I'm just kind of writing things along and every single, like this step was wrong and this step was wrong and this step was wrong. It's very, very important to get comfortable with failure and to, for the reason of fixing it. It's like, it's not like it's like, oh man, I did that wrong. I must be. And you start talking about all these bad words about yourself. No, you're not. You did it wrong. Who cares? Figure it out. Fix it. Move on. You know, learn why it was wrong and do it right. And don't get into that like cycle of like, oh, I must be. It's like, no, you just didn't know how to do it. Now you do. Now learn it and then move on. So Carson, I write down X2 instead of 2X2 on the third line. Yep. <laughs> That's the, you know, R4 on the last step, right? Row four. It is so crazy, like, because these build, that one mistake, all of a sudden just, you know, an error in any one moment moves throughout the entire problem. And that's where it makes it very difficult to grade because I can look at your answer and it's like crazy looking, but it was like just a one single oops, but the rest of the work was correct. Um, I had a physics professor that got rid of that problem in the following way. I had a two problem exam and exam one, I mean the first problem was on the front sheet and then I flip it over and that's the second problem. And so the first problem, I did everything correctly. And then you flip the sheet over and it says, okay, given the answer from problem one, then continue on with a different step. So I went back and flipped it, I read it, flipped it back over and wrote it wrong. Right? It's like I did the work correctly, but I wrote it wrong when I flipped the page over. And then I did all of the work correct as if, you know, that what I wrote was right. And he just said, you know, problem one, 
You got that right. Problem two, you got a zero. It was like, I just didn't copy it right. He's like, that's right. You didn't copy it right, zero. And I never made that, <laughs> I mean, I was like, oh my goodness. And so it's important because errors cascade that you try to get into the nitty gritty details and not, not kill yourself. I do give partial credit, he never did. So he also said you never wanted to be an A student. You always wanna be a B student because if you get hired, you don't want to be an A student. This is a straight A student. I'm going to give you a really hard task to do that almost nobody can do or else they would have already solved it. If you're, to, if you're B and you're average coming out, they don't give you those impossible problems. So you'll be able to do it and you get a raise. That was his example. If you're an A student, they'll give you a task you can't do, you get fired. <laughs> if you're a B student, they'll give you a task you can do and you'll get a raise, which was always interesting to me. All right, so that's the first two problems, which are the same problem. Uh, third problem, you just have to be able to do ins and outs correctly. So you have uh, intersection one flowing in is one, X what? one and 20. No solution. What? No solution. Yeah, this is no and solution. Anytime I work when somewhere wrong, I was yeah. like, maybe there's no solution. Then I tried to solve and then didn't make any sense. And yep. then I was like, whatever, just write. I think there's no solution somewhere. I just yep. want to do it from the top. Yep. And there's like, no solution. You to say. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the arrows were there on the test. They were that little guy right there. Yeah. So, yes, the arrows were on the test. And so X1, 20, X2, and 30. And so you just do a plus, which means X1 minus X2 is 10. And then I move down to, it doesn't matter which way you go, but every intersection has its own in outs. And it'll yeah, end kept, up being, yep. Oh, I said I kept getting zero equals negative 10. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense, so. That's right. And so <laughs> therefore, what does that mean? No solution. No <laughs> solution, right? Uh, on, the, on, the, on the exam review, what were the three things that, what were the three mm -hmm. types of answers I said could happen? when you do no. a system of equations. No solution, one solution, or infinite. infinite solutions, right? And so all three were available for me to do it. And this one, I was like, meh, I'll just make it no solution. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of people are always looking for an answer, right? And the yeah, answer is no. <laughs> and, it's, and it's frustrating. It's like, I'm supposed to give numbers. It's like, why, right? This well, is, it's perfectly fine to say no solution. Also forgot to write. <laughs> <laughs> Worked it out right though. So. Yeah, and so and there was two. There's the, the things that I'm looking for on this, and this is yeah. Inconsistent is the word no solution, right? So if you say inconsistent, what you've told me is no solution. If you say that's one of the statements, and if you say consistent, you say that it either has one solution or an infinite solutions. So you either tell me it's inconsistent or you tell me it's no solution. That means the same thing. Um, you know, on this, I want to see, you know, Gaussian elimination on an augmented matrix, right? It, 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 as you go through it. So it wasn't Gauss-Jordan, it was just Gaussian elimination, but I needed to see, again, an augmented matrix, a Gaussian elimination. So what I'm looking for is that you read the traffic flow diagram problems and you knew how to set up the algebra. And after you set up the algebra correctly, you can write it as an augmented matrix, which is essentially half the work, right? After that, it's just, and notice how what I did, it's like one negative one, one negative one, one negative one, one negative one, hey. Anyways, it's like, and so that made the, the row ops easy. And so that's the thing. It's like everybody sits there and I thought that when I didn't got an answer, I'm so used to having an answer. You know, that's the whole thing. I mean, we're so, we're so trained to only see things the way a book gives it to you, right? Rather than the way it actually happens in real life. In real life, there's lots of no solutions. There's lots of, you know, inconsistency and consistency and depending on the problem. And one of the things you need to get comfortable with is I know I did my steps right. And so I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to, I know I did step one, right? I know I did step two, right? And I found out this was inconsistent. 
I'm going to trust myself and I'm going to call it inconsistent. Um, which is one of those things that open book tests kind of hurt you with because you always are like doubting yourself. And so for here, you only needed to get rid of that one. Just do it by adding. Then you got to get rid, get rid of that one. You do it by adding. Then I got to get rid of that one and you do it by adding. And then finally we get zero equals 10. And then inconsistent, no solution, you're done. Uh, for this problem, uh, if you looked back at, the, back at the original, one of the things that happens is without even solving it, there should be some warning signs going off in your head. You know, when you look at it and it's like, you can look at the problem and notice certain things might be problematic. So for example, if I imagined that this was just at this quad intersection, right? No matter what, if I didn't even know, if it was a black box to me and I didn't know what was going on, what I could definitely say is cars going into the black box better equal cars leaving the black box, right? Or else mm -hmm. something's happened, right? There's a parking garage, right? Or there's an apartment complex, something, you know, there's something I didn't expect. I'm expecting traffic flow. And then all you have to do is just simply say, okay, what's the in and out, right? So you could do things like, oh, look, there's an in matching and out, there's an in matching and out, there's an in matching and out. There's not an in matching and out. There's more people leaving than coming in across, right? So plus 10 minus 10, plus 10 minus 10, plus 15 minus 15, plus 20 minus 30. The net effect of this system is 10 more cars leave than cars go in. So that's not going to be a consistent system. Something unusual is going on and I ought to pick a different model. And that would be just by observation. And that's one of the things that does happen, right? We do use these things for traffic flow. And it's one of those things where it's like, what would inconsistent mean? You know, how do I solve this problem? Well, for this one, it's just inconsistent. But then you could ask for like further questions is, you know, the questions of, you know, why is this inconsistent? What is inconsistency? That's not part of this problem, but later on in the real world, as you start to solve things, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I trust my work and I think I did this right or I didn't do this right. How do I justify it? Operations, yeah, a two by three times a three by two transpose is a two by three times a two by three. Nope, <laughs> don't even do problem one. Problem A, uh, you have rows and columns, each row, but there's only like, so it'd be A times X and then A times Y and then A times Z, that'd be row one. Because I have a three by one, I have a three by one, a one by three spits out a three by three. This is a one by three and this is a three by one, spits out a one by one. And so we just get the normal operators that we expect. Um, you should also be able to do A times A, matrix multiplication, one, two, one, two, six, two, one, two, one. And now that you do that, you know, minus three I, it's just threes on the diagonal. You subtract that, subtract like values. And so you should be able to do arithmetic. I mean, that's what all that problem is. Um, anything on those that you feel like were just like completely out of, out of left field and you didn't expect? No. Are you okay with me? Did you, do you feel like I am in the review that you did expect <laughs> to see something that wasn't allowed? Yeah, because you said that. Okay. Expect something that... that... That can happen, right? I do have a question. Yep. Um, why do you have an X and well, an XDT instead of an XYZ on the third part. XDT? Or that's what it looks like to me. Maybe I'm just misreading it. XYZ, X. Oh, you mean the BY? You mean this part right here? Yeah. That's AX. Oh, that's me being super sloppy. X, Y. <laughs> so I suppose <laughs> a real sloppy Y, Z. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right, that was me writing too fast. <laughs> okay. So sorry. Yes. Um, that looked pretty bad. That three doesn't look like a three. I mean, I really need to do, I've talked about this on writing with tablets where my, my hand is down below. My handwriting's bad enough. It, it adds to it make it worse when I 
I'm watching my mouse on the screen and it's like writing, it'd be like writing with your hand over here and it becomes weird. Um, I, I always know that I should try like calligraphy software, like learn how to write well. <laughs> but it's like my life's busy enough and then I make bad things like this. Uh, number four, I thought matrix components retained the T superscripts. But those aren't, uh, this is like if you would do a matrix um, transpose, right? You're going to take all the rows and columns and swap them. So if I would take negative one, two, one, negative one, negative one, one, and now I'm taking a matrix called V, right? And I'm transposing it. But once you, but a transpose is just switch your rows and columns. So column one would become row one, column two would become row two. But once you have done the column row swap, you have completed the operator. And so you, you don't have to say transpose anymore. Um, yes, in the review, it was for 1.6. In review, the question was something like, if I would give you a match on 1.6, it wasn't the review for the exam, but for the 1.6 review is if I would have B over A and I would want to, where this is a true matrix, right? It's a matrix inside a matrix. Then when you transpose it, the transpose moves in and the outer transpose is now being completed. So it's no longer written. And if I would transpose these, and so if I would have something like one, two, three, four, and one, two, if I would transpose, and I would call that guy B, if I would transpose that, then that would become one, two, three, four, and if I would transpose that, that would come one, two, and then the transpose has been completed, rather than saying that this one, two, three, four, if I haven't yet done the transpose, right? If I haven't yet done the transpose, I would have to say transpose. But when I do the actually do the transpose, I have completed the transpose and the T goes away. But that wasn't this problem. This problem was just taking the transpose of a bunch of elements, which just says, hey, you know, flip this about the diagonal. It's a it's a mirror flip where rows become columns, columns become rows. And more than anything else, it was just the idea of size change. By transposing a three by two, it becomes a two by three. Do, 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 do. That doesn't look like an A. Okay. All right, and uh, algebra. If I would have X, the first thing you would do is bring your B across and that'd be a minus B by using the additive inverse to form the additive identity big O. And then I need to move the A and I move the A by taking a, a inverse of both sides. And if I take A inverse of both sides, X has to be that thing. So to Calculate X means I need to figure out the I plus a 2C minus a B. And I also have to calculate A inverse. And then I'm going to multiply those two. Um, for Colton, uh, incorrect. Whether you, the, the symbology, I'll have to look at your particular problem. But what I'm looking for of correctness on 4A is to say this is can not do the operation. That's what I want to see. That you cannot multiply these because the matrices are of wrong size. So then, so this would be like, you know, a portion of your credit. You need to tell me how you would calculate X because what I'm normally am catching is, again, the big old thump is if I would see this, Right, I already said that I'm, I'm not happy, <laughs> right? You cannot, this makes no sense, there is no such thing. It's like, you know, saying that I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna, you know, do an operator like, uh, I'm gonna integrate something that's not integrable, right? It's something that doesn't exist. 
right? You cannot do those sorts of things. So that's important. Uh, make sure that the A inverse shows up on the right side. Why? Because if A is on the right, to get rid of it, I need to apply the right, right? That allows me to check, do you understand how matrix algebra actually works? That's what I wanna see. And then it's just doing the work, right? How do you find inverses? You, you know, you set it, you augment it with the identity matrix, you do your work. It's just three steps. Why? I picked something. This is another reason why I, I picked a matrix as triangular, which means I knew it's a determinant, which is going to be the multiplication, which is one. So I know that the, the inverse is going to be all ints because it's all ints. There's no fractions that are going to occur because that's what the, uh, the cofactor would tell me. That's how I set up the problem. So it makes it so that it's easy to do. I've already done the Gaussian. You just need to do Gauss-Jordan. You do the Jordan component, and then you just find the inverse. So one was checking, do you know how to do Jordan elimination? When I've already done Gaussian elimination for you. And once you've done that, you also have to figure out that whole mess of the I and the two C and the minus a B, and then be able to put those matrices together which end up being that matrix and that matrix multiplied, which is can you multiply matrices? So this is a problem that does algebra and arithmetic and rather detail work. If you don't get this, you need to point out, find where I went, like where did you go wrong? Any questions on that problem? Is everybody still awake? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I switched up the placing of A inverse. That's pretty much the most common mistake, right? Would be putting A inverse on the left instead of the right. And they forget that multiplication is not commutative. It's direct, it's side. All right. So if you can't tell, I uh, did the work the same, but I think I had a multiplication error that happens as well. All right, I can actually ask a question. Do you notice a technique that I, when I make these problems, do you notice that I tend to be attacking the common things that people get wrong, right? I don't, it's not just, can you do this? It's, do you under, it's, uh, I tend to attack things like, all right, here's a problem that I'm gonna really try to make sure, do you remember that multiplication is not commutative? Do you remember it's okay to have no solution? Do you remember? I'm not trying to just simply brute force like arithmetic problems. These tend to be ones that allow me to know a little bit more about you. Do, do, do any of these to this point seem like they're completely just bonkers in terms of like you didn't expect? Oh boy, that'll be a hard one. <laughs> like A from problem five on accident. Yeah, that happens. Like you just go through. Uh, give me a little bit on the book of the day. I want to get through, or actually, which problem are we on? We're up to problem seven. All right. Mm, let me see. Book of the day. Oh, here's an old one. Uh, have a actually signed by the author on this one. So to Mark, may all your problems be finite. It's a friend of mine actually, uh, he's retired now. And this is Finite Mathematics by William H. Richardson. And one of the nice things is like finite mathematics is kind of uh, where it, we also call it discrete. And the idea that math itself is based upon more along the, the idea of things like the integers rather than continuous and like how many numbers are between certain amounts is that you can break them into, into discretized things. Logic be true and false. Uh, so machines, zero, one, you know, bits integers one two three anything that's in that would be within the realm of finite up to a certain value uh, infinite and when people talk about infinity all infinity means is not finite 
and there's things that are not finite and we study that and what's interesting is you take classes like that you start to realize that uh, there are many types of things that are not finite there are sizes of infinity some infinities are larger than other infinities and the way you compare things is my favorite example is just like the idea of like sit down um, how do you know you have without counting students in chairs how could you tell which one was larger well you tell the students to sit and if everybody can't sit somebody's like I don't have a chair I know I have more students than chairs without having to quote unquote count them and so that's one of the ways you can do comparisons of things that are infinite you try to pair them all right so seven LU factorization um, notice that I used if you look at it it uses the same matrix for seven and eight. Uh, use the same matrix. Oh man, that evil. Do, 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 do. Where are we at? Silly thing crashed. Enter. Restore file. Where are we at? So did it do it? Five, six, seven. Fifteen. All right, let's bring it back. Start sharing. I figure out why Zoom crashes things like this every now and then. All right, so where are we at? Six, seven, seven. LU factorization. Um, LU factorization are just tracking your operators till you make it upper triangular. So this matrix ends up being for problem seven, problem eight use the same matrix. So the operators would have been the same. So the first thing you do is you have your one, you need to make everybody below it a zero. So you use negative two of row one, you use one of row one and that makes those two zeros. Then you take your next lead and you wanna make everybody below it a zero. And so I would use one row two added to row three to make a new row three. And this is now upper triangular. So once it's upper triangular, Gaussian elimination has been completed. The thing that you did is that the end result is your U. And then what's your L? Your L is the inverse of the elementary operators. So if you did negative two of row one, two, that would be two. Uh, if you did a one, that would be minus one. If you did a one, that would be a minus one. And so that is your L. You just track what your inverses were. Um, I took away two, I'm gonna add two. I added one, I'm gonna take away one. I added one, I'm gonna take away one. That's your L, L. U factorization. And you can always, when in doubt, you can check. Just multiply it back, you'll still get A. So that's LU factorization. It was one of the ones I hoped would take you not as much time as you were doing it. I tried to set it up where it was just Question three instead of something larger. Yep. Um, so you you uh, just do the regular row echelon and then you get your, L. is that L or is that that's U, right? And you inverse that to get L? Yeah, to, no, 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 you don't inverse it, right? The idea was you had your elementary operator, right? <laughs> so the yeah. elementary operator for him was one, zero, zero, negative two, one, zero, 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 one, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of those are happening to A, right? So what happened to get U? What happened was, is I took E1 times A, that was this one, there's E1. What's happening is you're doing, for this problem, three ops because there's three things to get rid of. But that's happening to A. Factorization is A needs to equal, which means these need to do what? They need to move to the other side, mm -hmm. which is inverse. And what's the inverse of a type three? Well, I, I subtracted two. What's his inverse? Add two. 
Oh, I added one. What's its inverse? Subtract one. Well, I added one, right? That's this guy right here. I added one. What's his inverse? Subtract one. It ends up being in the other ways. I, I, we that one review I talked about, like on the LU factorization, is when those do go to the other side. When you have the E1 inverse, the E2 inverse, the E3 inverse, and then you have your U. What you had was this idea of one zero zero two zero. Sorry, one zero 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 one. You had this one zero zero uh, zero one zero negative one zero one. You had your one zero 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 one zero zero negative one one times your u. If you multiply these, this is where I talked about in the review. You're going to get this. When you actually do multiply those, all that happens is they just like slap right on top of each other. The inverse and the inverse and the inverse thing, the two, the minus one and the minus one, stay where they're at and nobody else changes. Why? It's, it's, a, it's a feature of solving and multiplying lower triangular matrices of type three. It's a feature of that. And so what I had mentioned in the review was skip this. You could write this down if you want, but you can skip it and write the answer. Because what happened is on the left-hand side, you were subtracting two, you're adding one, you're adding one to create the U. Well, then how can I solve for A? Move them to the other side. How do I do that? I inverse them. Well, what's the inverses? Change the sign. That's all you have to do. And then you'll get this L, that's my L in U. And that's what, you have to show me the L and you have to show me the U from up above. Yeah, LU is expectable. I mean, what, I, what I'm wanting to see for the answer is these two matrices. I wanna see the L, I wanna see the U, correct. Uh, then you would do the exact same ops to find the inverse and you should have found two, negative two, negative three, one, zero, one, negative one, one, one. Which we've already, you already did an inver inverse up above. There was the easier inverse I gave you to do on this problem and this was easier because I already had put it into Gaussian and you just needed to do the Jordan. Uh, this problem here is harder in the fact that obviously you do Gaussian elimination first. You know, you take negative two row one, add it to row two to make that a zero, do the rest. You simply add the rows to make that a zero and then you do the rest. Then you're just gonna add those two to make that a zero and then now it's in Gaussian, now we do Gauss-Jordan. Make the guys up above zeros, you would just subtract, you would subtract two, those two become zeros, just subtract the two, and we get that right there. And again, you can always check if you want to, that A inverse, A is the identity, and A inverse is the identity, if you want. That's an always quick thing to say, well, did I do the problem right? You can always check. Any questions on those two problems? So far on the mistakes I've seen is it's arithmetic. I mean, it's just, you know, augmenting the identity and doing the correct work as you go through it to show me step by step that you're getting it. And again, the things I don't like to see is <laughs> uh, all of your work being wrong. and then you write the correct answer. Uh, determinants. Um, again, uh, cofactor expansion is always best to pick the row that has the most number of zeros or the column with the most number of zeros, doesn't matter which. I picked row three. You could, if you wanted to, pick row one, right? And say it's one times the determinant of that, and then you just do three things. By picking something with zeros, it just means less work. 
either way, however you chose, like you could expand it along row two, you could expand it along column two, you could expand, it doesn't matter as long as you follow the correct technique. Like if you would do the cofactors go plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and so that's my plus minus pattern. And now that you know your plus minus pattern, it's gonna be plus three, and then what's left over, two, three, one, two. And then it's gonna be minus two, and then if this is gone and this is gone, what's the what's left over? One, three, two, two. That's the minor. Uh, then I go zero, and then I don't care, right? Because it's plus zero. Who cares? Let's leave it off. And you get three minus eight minus a negative eight plus eight eleven. Uh, then you could do on the other hand by elimination, uh, you could have this, which is going to be equal to the determinant of take negative two row one, take negative three row one, you get that. Now you could do a cofactor expansion, but I wanted full elimination so that you get the, tri or the, dia the triangular matrix and uh, you would have to use a, a negative uh, four thirds of row two added to row three. And if you do that, you would get zero, zero, negative 11 thirds and you get 11. Now, here comes the fun part. The determinant is 11, singular or non-singular. Non-singular. Is non-singular, all right? Does that mean invertible or non-invertible? The inverse exists, invertible. And here comes the last part. If I would ask you to solve AX equals zero, then, all right, pause. AX equals, that, notice that is a bold font zero, right? <laughs> it's a bold font zero. So what type of, that's not part of the problem, but what type of system is this? That is called a what system? Homogeneous. Okay. Homogeneous. If it's homogeneous, what are, it must be consistent. How many solutions, what the solutions are two types of consistence. One consistent is one solution. One consistent is an infinite number of solutions, right? But since the inverse exists, right? It's the trivial solution then. Yep, then only trivial solution, which is yes, Drew. It's either zero or infinite, so therefore it's only the trivial solution because there are no free variables because of the existence of the inverse. And it's, you know, it's row equivalent to the identity. So there's that. On this one, uh, same problem, exact same problem, except I throw in letters, right? And the, uh, instead of doing a cofactor expansion, it's easier to do elimination. Uh, the easiest way to do is take row one minus row three. Uh, and row one minus row three becomes zero, zero, and then A minus C. And then it becomes triangular. And so its determinant is just simply one times A minus B times A minus C is the determinant. Now. For A to be singular, what does that tell you about the determinant? What must the determinant be to be singular? We already answered it on this problem. A square matrices? Right. It's square, right, which it is. It's square. This is three by three. But to be singular is not have an two, inverse. Which would be what in terms of the determinant? Determinant has to be equal to zero. Right. And so since the determinant is 11 and 11 is not zero, <laughs> that's why it is non-singular. That is why it is invertible. If it is zero, the word you would use was singular and non-invertible, right? That's what the, the idea of flipping, what does the determinant determine, <laughs> right? If the determinant is zero, 
if the determinant is zero, it is singular, right? So if the determinant is zero, what you're telling me is the determinant, which is that, is zero. So now we go to college algebra. If you have two things multiplying, equaling zero, what does that tell you? Either one is zero or the other is zero, which means A equals B or A equals C. So what conditions must A, B, and C satisfy? If A is B or B is, or A is C, if A and B are equal or A and C are equal, this thing will be singular. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what would it mean for it to be not singular? It would be not that. Anybody know what not that is? It, I, it would be, what's not A equal B? A does not equal B. What's the negation of or is and. and, and then A is not C. So it has to be both, not, A can't be B and A can't be C at the same time. And so that is non-singular. But what does non-singular mean? Invertible. So what I know is for 10A, no, uh, this is, that's important, right? You, if A equals B equals C, the, like this, right? This is an or. In other words, um, it doesn't mean that all three are the same. It says A compares to B, A compares to C. Well, what about B and C? don't care. B and C could be the same number, but A has to be not that, right? So uh, A equals B equals C is different than A equal B or A equals C. Because if you tell me A equals B equals C, you're telling me that all three are the same thing. That is not the same thing as A equals B or A equals C. I could you know, I could have one equals one, but one is not obviously three. In other words, what if A is one, B is one, and C is three? It would not be invertible. But C is not one, I don't care, right? A can't, if A is B or A is C, I got a problem. These are two different statements. That's one of the things like on these is like, yeah, you have to be extra careful on wording on these, but notice that I keep coming back to testing you on, do you understand what singular is? Do you understand what non-singular is? Do you know, understand how that means about determinant? Do you understand what that means about invertible? I'm asking you this on multiple questions because this is horrifically important. <laughs> it's understanding definitions. It's understanding meanings. Uh, Sirium just asked, the answer is, if A equals B or B equals C, can we say A equals B equals C? No, you cannot. Because A equal B equal C says they all three have to be identical. Okay. But that's not necessary on the first two. So um, what is non-singular? That says invertible. So that would mean that I need to be non-invertible means that A can't be B and A can't be C. So I could like pick A equal one, B equal two, and C equal three, right? And then you could write a matrix, right? Whatever that is. A isn't B and B, A isn't C. But on the other hand, I could do that. That would be fine too, because A is not B and A is not C, so we're safe. It doesn't really tell you anything about B compared to C. So this would be okay as well. All of those would be invertible. All right, uh, can we write A not B not C for, uh, yeah, uh, for B, yes, because they're all ands. Uh, it is not B and it's not, yeah, because that's all of the same operator. Uh, wait, 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 uh, maybe be careful on that. So A pound, a is not B and A is not C. Then again, we still have the issue of, well, what about, but if you say A is not B is not C, you're forcing B to not be C. 
right? But again, we're, I need to be careful here on that statement. Those are two different things. So, nope. But those are subtly things. I mean, it's like question of how do I write my answer, <laughs> right? If I see the first part, like you wrote this, and then you went further, and it was like, well, what you wrote is not, you know, correct compared to what you write. A lot of times I'll just simply say, I'll ignore that and stop and say, hey, stop here. This is correct. Don't try to simplify. The hard part about things like that um, is that actually leads to like philosophy paradoxes. Yeah, I had a question try to really simplify quick. It. Yep. Okay, I don't know how this happened. I, I think I factored out a negative sign because it's equals zero on the other side, but I've got B minus A, uh, that quantity times the quantity of A minus C equals zero. So you get the same result. Yep, you do. I, I, okay. Yeah, I mean, it still can't be A equals B or yes. A equals C. Yep. And the B is still, the, I have the same answer as you. I just. Right. And because okay. what you're really doing is you're taking, you're factoring out a minus sign. Yeah. Okay. I was just, so when you, you look, I'll, I'll put a note, but when you look at mine, that's going to happen. So, well, that's the whole thing. If I see that, it doesn't matter. I, that, that I can recognize. Yeah. It wasn't like B plus A or anything. It's, right. it's still, there's still difference, but. Okay. okay. Yep. And then for problem 11, my big point here was bold font A's on a capital A mean what? It's A's columns. That's what I was trying to like force you to tell me. <laughs> What's a bold font A? It's it, compared to bold font lowercase a is A's columns. That's the normal way we write this. Okay, so what do I have? I have a A's columns look like this. So what do I have? I have A's first column plus A's third column is equal to A's second column to A's fourth column. Um, but then I'm asking you about, you know, a matrix times X is zero, but that would be another way of writing that would be something times A's first column plus something times A's second column plus something times A's third column plus something times A's fourth column is all big O. That's what that means, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, because what is a matrix times a vector? It's something times its first column, something times its second column, something times its third column, something times its fourth column is big O. And so this was similar to that one problem where you might look at this, but there's a way of interpreting it, right? It's columns time, you know, these things are columns. And I can represent them as columns if I choose to. And so when I look at this, I have a bunch of A's columns, but this has a linear combination. So and I look at this and I look at that and it's like, you know what? If I would take this to the other side, which would be A's first minus A's second, which is A's third minus A's fourth, that's equal to the zero vector. That looks exactly like what I'm talking about. All right, because what is a matrix times a vector? It's just a linear combination of the columns. So this, is actually A times one minus one, one minus one equals zero. So this here is a different way of writing this, which is similar to the one problem where it talked about like this A, B, which is this times B1, B2, and then the distributing as well as that part. So it's, it's just a different way of writing the same problem. Now we take a pause, right? What does this say? I have A times this equals zero. By definition, what does that make? One, negative one, one, negative one. It's a solution. But that's a non-trivial solution. So then we get to go through all the definitions. <laughs> what happens if you have a non-trivial solution? You have an infinite number of solutions. What happens if you have an infinite number of solutions? Uh, that means that uh, it is singular. It is not invertible. And it pulls all of those words back together. 
So the main sticking point of problem 11 was recognizing the fact that columns compared to the algebra do have a tie. And you can go back and forth. And so being told this is being told that you have a non-trivial solution. And being told you not have a non-trivial solution means all those facts come along for, for the ride. Non-trivial solutions means infinite solutions, means it's not invertible, which means it's singular, which means the inverse does not exist. And all of those things come along for the ride. All right, and that's exam 11, sorry, exam one probably. Exam 11. <laughs> Exam 11, woo! Anyways, so now everybody has the answers. So you should be able to go back to your work and make a reasonable estimate on what you did right and what you did wrong. And what I would like you to be able to do, obviously, is to do all these right. Scroll back up to number nine real quick. Sure. Yep. All right, thank you. I just wanted to make sure something. Okay. No, you don't get credit back. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question on that. Yes, uh, I did the book of the day. Anybody want to tell what the book of the day was? It was Finite Mathematics by William H. Richardson. See, there's another question, 11 thirds, because I took this um, to get rid of the four. Yeah. I would take uh, row four, add a negative four thirds of row three to make a row four. Ooh. And negative four thirds of negative four is negative 16 thirds, right? Well, sorry, positive 16 thirds. And positive 16 thirds minus nine, and nine would be negative 27 thirds. And 20, negative 27 thirds plus 16 thirds is negative 11 thirds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. There was a question on partial credit. You get partial credit on everything, right? So I'll give you partial credit on every single problem if you did some work at all. Or it's either zero up to 10, right? I'll look at your work and make a, a judgment call. So I just upload the notes for another submission. Yes, if you want to. And you don't have to do that. There's a question on if you want to inform me on like, this is what I did on this. Just go back to the assignment and you can upload any other stuff that you want me to know. You can upload it as another submission. I can see all those sorts of things. So I could either see it as a second submission and I'll look at the first submission and the second submission. You can write notes. Blackboard has a lot of options on assignments. So uh, I'll dig it out. Right. Whatever you find easiest. If you want to, you don't have to. Yes, A equal B equals C equals zero is wrong. But if I see the work, there was a question on that ABC one. If I see your work and I see this A minus B and the A minus C multiplied to zero, then I'll, you know, you got to that point. And the question is, it's understanding college. That's college algebra from that point. Yes, uh, I see all submissions. That's what I see. If you submit, and I think I have unlimited submissions, so it just don't make me dig through a bunch of it. Sometimes when you upload a second submission, the professor's like, oh, I didn't get the first one. <laughs> so just making. Well, now what happens is, is that you have to dig down and look at the individual submission. You have to look at the assignment and it says, hey, this is submission one, this is submission two, this is submission three, and you just have to go through them one at a time. A lot of them just look at the last, right? Because, I don't know, Blackboard's oddball sometimes. When you get the chance also, could you uh, upload the, I guess, the, scre the screenshots or the homework for this week? Oh, yeah, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> I know you said chapter three is the one that changed and is chapter three now, so. Right, wondering. that's the one I really have to double check. All right, thank you. 
Yeah, individually, send me an email like on the time. What I have to do is I'm gonna have to dig through the timestamps on. There's a question on like download view PDF and stuff like that. You need to kind of let me know. I'll look at the timestamps and see what all happened. Um, that, that's gonna be the hard part is not trying to use that as like a, uh, I don't know, excuse. I'll have to, that's, that's the discussion we'll have to have. The idea is that I want it not start until you looked at the exam to begin it. I'll have to look exactly what, how Blackboard handles the view option. Stop sharing. That's a long morning. Save. So if you guys did anything like that, let me know. We'll work it out. So is everybody okay otherwise? When will we get our test grade back? I'm going to start grading. So as I go through it, the hard part, I used to, what I normally grade paper exams is grade everybody's page one, grade everybody's page two. Now I'm just going to go through and just start grading one and try to get the uh, partial credits and then dig it out as I have time this week. It usually takes several days. But honestly, for your work, you should have a ballpark. It's all quiet. All right. If it's quiet and there's no questions, I probably should start grading. All right. Have a good day, everybody, for those that are still here.